accommodation and subject to refraction. Accommodation is the ability of the eye to change its total dioptric power to bring object at different distances into focus. The stimulus to accommodation is retinal blur. If you see a distant object, the accommodation will be relaxed. But while seeing a near object, if the lens continues to be in a relaxed state, the image will not focus on the retina and we cannot see clearly. The two main refractive components of the eye are the cornea and the lens. The power of cornea is constant. So, the lens changes its curvature to increase the power of the eye thereby focusing the image on the retina. Proper accommodation control is probably the most important factor in the refraction process. By controlling the accommodation, we can find out the true refractive state of the eye without any additional effort by the accommodation. If we do not properly control the accommodation, the refraction end point will fluctuate leading to wrong prescriptions. Example, if the true error is plus 2 for a patient, but you only correct him by plus 1.50. So, the patient will see the object clearly with this additional use of 0.5 accommodation. Another example, if the true error is plus 1, minus 1 1.5, but you correct them with minus 1.75. So, that patient will constantly use plus 0.25 of accommodation to see clearly. But the overuse of accommodation may develop the patient with asthenopic symptoms like headache, watering and eye strain. With relaxing accommodation, we can avoid undercorrection of hyperopia or overcorrection of myopia. Principle of fogging. The principle of fogging involves using plus pericle powers to create artificial myopia thereby moving the entire area of focus in the eye in front of the retina. Now, if the eye accommodates further, the rays will further converge and make the image blurred. So, accommodation will not be stimulated. Fogging is effective irrespective of the refractive state of the eye and can be done for all type of refractive errors. Indications These are the circumstances where we do fogging to control accommodation during retinoscopy, refraction of pediatric patients who have excessive accommodation, refraction of patients with asthenopic symptoms. When the optometrist has a reasonable suspicion of a patient with an over minus prescription, refraction of a patient with latent hyperopia, in certain cases of uh, squint and amblyopia. During binocular balancing test, we will see about this test later in a separate video. Uh, basically, we do this test to balance the accommodation between both eyes. Used in astigmatic dial or fan test. Contraindications Patients with very, very poor visual acuity, like in low vision. Patients with very poor visual acuity may be difficult to fog as they may be unable to differentiate between the pre and post fogging vision states. Aphakia, pseudophakia, because there is no natural lens present in the eye to accommodate. Cyclopegia, here we use chemical agent to paralyze the leery body, thus preventing accommodation. So, as the accommodation has already been blocked, there is no need to do fogging again. During binocular balancing test, if the acuity is uh, different for both eyes, we do not do the test itself. So, the prerequisite for binocular balancing test is to have equal acuity between the two eyes. This video concentrates on fogging done in subject to refraction to achieve maximum plus for maximum visual acuity. This procedure is carried out monocularly with the other eye being occluded. By convention, the right eye is done first followed by the left eye, done in a normal room illumination. Begin by inserting the trial lenses from object refraction findings. This could be based on net retinoscopy result, auto refractometry result or their formal spectacular contact lens prescription. The patient's visual acuity is noted immediately after this step. Now, put sufficient plus power over the objective findings in place until the visual acuity is 2 or 3 lens worse than the earlier acuity with the objective findings in place. If not, keep increasing the plus until you get 2 or 3 lens worse acuity than earlier. If the patient is found to be sufficiently fogged, you can move to the defogging process. Slowly reduce the plus power in 0.25 steps, directing the patient's attention to the largest optotype 
and encouraging them to read downwards as the optotype transition from larger to smaller ones. Always remember to put new plus lens first and then remove the old plus lens from the trial frame. Otherwise, accommodation could be stimulated. You should expect the patient to report an improved visual acuity with, with every 0.25 steps reduction in the trial frame. The defogging process ends when you notice that the reducing plus power does not improve the visual acuity. The residual plus power is then added to the objective findings. Example, net retinoscopy finding is plus 2.5 diopter. With 2.5 diopter, the patient read 66. So, you fog them with plus 1 and the patient now read 612. So, you achieved your 2 lines worse acuity and begin defogging the patient. With plus 1, he read 612. With plus 0.75, he read 69 partial. With plus 0.5, he read 66 partial. And with plus 0.25, he read 66 clearly. So, the final Rx will be plus 2.5 from the objective value with plus 0.25 from the fogging value. Totally plus 2.75 diopter. If fogging was not done to the patient, you would have let the patient with the 0.25 adapter under correction. Common mistakes under fogging the patient. In this situation, the examiner puts in plus perical powers at the level that is not sufficient to reduce the visual acuity or keep accommodation in check by bringing the conoidal storm forward into the hypothetical vitreous space in front of the retina. The patient therefore continues to accommodate to bring the conoidal storm closer to the retina behind it. Over fogging the patient. In this case, the examiner puts in too much plus perical powers, thereby pushing the conoid of sturm too far in front of the retina into the hypothetical vitreous space with the resulting consequence of unnecessarily prolonging the defogging process. Allowing too much time between removal and insertion of lenses. Removing the fogging lens to replace it with another lens should be done as quickly as possible without causing the patient any discomfort. This is achievable by having the replacement lens in hand while removing the fogging lens. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Let's Learn Optometry for more optometry and eye care videos.